Chris, I got a real tough one for you today. A tough question? Yeah. I don't have all the answers, you know. Well, I sure hope you have the answer to this one, because it's the best argument against God I've ever seen. Oh. The problem of evil? How did you know that was the one I meant? It's the only really tough argument against God. How would you put it? This way. It sounds awfully simple and unanswerable. God is supposed to be completely good, right? Right. And also completely powerful, right? Right. And evil things really happen, right? Right. Terrible things. Suffering and death and injustice. Well, if there's a God running the world with his power, then he must want these bad things to happen. And then he's not good. And if God doesn't want them to happen and they do anyway, then he's not all-powerful. That's a very strong way of putting the argument. Well, let's begin by distinguishing two different questions about evil. The first question is where evil came from. Did God make it? The second question is where it's going to end up. What's God doing about it? Why doesn't he destroy it all right now? Well, now you've got two questions to answer instead of one. You're making it harder for yourself. No, I'm just trying to get rid of confusion so that I can answer the two questions in different ways. Well, let's hear your answer to the first one. Didn't God make everything? Yes. Well, then he must have made evil, too. How can a good God make evil? He didn't make evil. But you just said he made everything. Yes, but evil's not a thing. He made everything. You mean evil isn't real? Well, of course it's real. I didn't say that. I said it's not a thing. What is it, then? Well, look at it like this. If I hit you with a rock, that's evil, right? I'll say. But the rock isn't evil, is it? No. In fact, you have to find a good rock to hit me with. Well, what about my hand? Is my hand evil? No. You have two good hands. Okay, so what is evil? The choice to hit you is evil. The act of hitting you is evil. That's right. Well, God didn't make that choice or that act. I did. Well, I, I thought God made everything. Everything, yes. Every rock and hand and fish and star and atom and angel, yes. But he didn't make my choices or my acts. I make them with my own free will. If I choose evil, I'm to blame, not God. But he created you. Yes, but he created me good. I'm not evil until I choose to do an evil act. But God gave you the power to do evil acts, and the power freely to choose evil in your will. Yes, but power isn't evil by itself. Only using it in the wrong way is evil. The power in my arm is good. God gave it to me, and he wants me to use it for good. If I use it for evil, that's not God. The power in my will to choose is good too, and God gave me that. But I can use it wrongly against God's will. All right, but why does God allow you to do evil? Why does he allow terrible evils? Why did he allow Hitler to kill six million Jews and other people? Couldn't he perform a miracle and stop it if he's all-powerful? All right, well now you're asking the second question. Not where evil comes from, but where it's going, and what God is doing about it. Are you satisfied with my answer to the first question before we go on to the second? Yeah, evil comes from our free choice. But why did God give us free choice in the first place? Because he loved human beings, not robots or puppets. All right, but why doesn't he zap all the bad guys now and heal all the sick people? I think it's the same reason our parents don't do our homework for us. What do you mean? Well, you tell me. Why don't parents do homework for their children? If they did, their children wouldn't learn anything. And that wouldn't be good for students, would it? No. But doing homework sometimes is a pain, isn't it? Yeah. And parents could take that pain away if they gave their children the answers, couldn't they? Yeah. Are parents evil because they don't take that pain away? Well, of course not. They're good. Even though they let their children suffer? Um, yeah. So, just because someone lets you suffer, that doesn't necessarily mean that person is evil. No. So even though God lets us suffer sometimes, that doesn't mean he's evil either. Oh, but the sufferings in the world are a lot worse than homework. Of course. I just wanted to show you that someone who is good and loves you could still let you suffer sometimes. But why does God let so much of it go on? 
A lot of it is terrible suffering. And why does he let good people suffer as much as bad people? Those are very hard questions. And I'm afraid I don't know the answer to them. Oh. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I told you before that I don't have all the answers. I'll tell you what I know, and I'll tell you what I don't know. No faking it. Well, thanks for being honest, anyway. But how can you still believe in a good God if you don't know why he lets people suffer? I know why he lets people suffer. I just don't know how he figures it all out. He lets people suffer for the same reason he does everything. He loves us. How is it love when he lets a young child die of cancer? I don't know. If I knew all the answers to questions like that, I wouldn't have to believe him. He asks us to trust him, even when we don't understand. I don't understand how you can take such a passive attitude. Just trust God no matter what? Oh, we don't take a passive attitude toward evil. We fight it, in ourselves and in the world, though the weapons we use aren't guns. The most important question about evil is not where it came from, but what to do about it. And the answer is to fight it. That's not passive. That's active. But where is God in this? Well, he didn't originate evil. And he's fighting against it with us. In us, even. We're fighting for him when we fight disease, or prejudice, or tyranny. All right. You've kept God good. But if he has to fight evil... He can't be all-powerful. I know for sure that God is all good. I also see that in Jesus. I believe God is also all-powerful, but I don't see that power even in Jesus. He died too, and that didn't look like power. But he also rose from the dead, and that was a kind of sign and a promise that God can do anything, and that he will conquer all evil in the end. Meanwhile, here we are up to our necks in it. Why doesn't he just clean up all the evil now? Because he wants us to do it. That's part of growing up, doing things for yourself. He's a good father. He doesn't do everything for his children, even though he can. Do you believe he'll wipe out all evil in the end? Yes. He's told us that. It's in the Bible. Well, why does he wait? Why can't we be at the end now? We're in time. Like being somewhere in a story that takes time to get to the end. You're asking why we're in the middle of the story now and not at the end. But you have to go through the middle to get to the end, just because it's a story. Every story takes time. You're asking God to create a world without time. A story that gets to the end right away. I still feel resentment and hate when I see terribly unjust things happen. I want to blame God even though I don't believe in God. But if you blame God, you blame our only hope for conquering evil in the end. He's on our side. He hates evil, too. The Bible is full of that. That's why he's so insistent about his laws. I think you're just leaping in the dark when you believe in a good God who's going to conquer all evil in the end. That just sounds too good to be true. I want to see more evidence before I make that leap. It's hard to trust a God who lets his world get so bad. I agree. What? I thought you were such a strong believer. I do believe. But you're right that it's hard to trust God sometimes when things go very wrong. It's like a dog trusting a hunter who's trying to get him out of a bear trap. The only way the hunter can do that is to push the dog into the trap farther first, and that doesn't look like something good. It also hurts. But it's really the best thing for the dog. He can't see that. He just has to trust the hunter. That's a nice analogy, but it's not like that with us and God. We don't see any hunter getting us out of the trap of evil. Yes, we do. Jesus Christ. He came right down into our trap and died to free us. The one who asks us to trust him to solve the problem of evil already did the greatest thing to conquer it. He suffered every kind of evil with us. He was hated by the people he loved. He was nailed to a cross and died. He even felt his father leave him horribly alone on the cross when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
All the evil in the world is there, and there he is in the middle of it. You think of God up in heaven controlling things down here, and you wonder why he doesn't do a better job. You wonder if he really cares, and how he can be good if he just stays there and turns away and lets terrible things happen. But it's not like that. He didn't stay away. He came down into evil. That's the Christian answer to the problem of evil. Not a tricky argument, but Christ on the cross. God on our side. The side of the innocent sufferer. How can you resent a God like that? I was thinking of the faraway God. It would be hard to trust a God like that. No, that's not our God. If you want to know what our God is like, look at Jesus. Now that's a whole new question. I can certainly love and admire Jesus, but Jesus was a man. How can a man be God? You have a great way of asking all the good questions. Let's look at that one tomorrow.